Well, good evening, everyone. I'm Rob May. I'm Director of Planning and Economic Development for the City of Brockton. And I welcome you to this second public meeting to talk about the redevelopment around the Montello um, MBTA train station. I'm really glad to have all of you out here, although it's a little warm, but it might just be me running up the stairs. So we'll get there in a minute. I'm sorry to catch my breath. Um, we are joined this evening by um, folks from our planning office, John Fay in the back, Evan Sears, Isaiah, um, and then uh, consulting assistants with um, Ennis and Associates, Emily Ennis, and Paula, I don't know your last name. She doesn't have a last name, okay, mm, like Cher, right. Um, so we're gonna do a couple of different exercises this evening, um, and Emily's gonna take us through there. And um, the planning staff will be here to work with you and help explain what's going on. But what we're trying to do is envision how Montello could look in the future. What areas should be industrial and stay industrial? What areas should be uh, mixed use? How do we potentially um, use Trout Brook, which runs through the area, as an asset instead of a hidden, you know, nobody look at it. It's over there. Um, and how do we create a better walking environment for people to get to the MBTA train station? And we're talking about both sides of the street now, or both sides of the track. So the um, Sparks intervale into the village a little bit, and then on the other side of the street, uh, our other side of the tracks, we have North Montello and up to the Howard School. So it's a big planning area. It's all very walkable to the train station. Um, and so we're just trying to figure out what is gonna be best in there and what would the community like to see? So um, I should probably mention there is a um, community-based um, advisory group that is working with us. And some of them are here in the room and I thank you guys uh, uh, that are here uh, for your participation and um, look forward to the next round after this. And we'll, we'll take all of this information back and discuss it with the group and see where we can tweak things and then we'll come back and show you what what we've done with it. So thank you. Emily? Oh, Paula, you're up. Paula with no name. Well, my name is Paula. Share. And, and Ramos Martinez is my last name, but it's okay. So I'm with Ines Associate. I'm the senior planner, urban designer. Uh, I'm going to talk here in her behalf. There is Emily, the director of the office. And we also are accompanied by over under the Rami here and Matthew over there, who is also a resident in Montello, so very welcome as well. Uh, so we have um, our agenda today. I'm going to go a bit back. Uh, thank you, Rob, for the introductions. Um, so we ha we're going to go through the plan process uh, a little bit. Um, then we have this I want to talk to you what are we doing in, the, in this area and other areas in the city. Um, and that, in that is a bit a bigger picture and that is the form-based code uh, that we talk a bit in the previous um, uh, meetings that we had, public meetings that we had where you also uh, were invited. And then we are going to have the second, the, the majority and the bigger part of uh, this meeting today is about the activities that we are going to do, that we have here, the material, and where we want you to give your feedback. We want to hear your suggestions so that we can uh, use it for our uh, land use plan and, and later on that will go into the form-based code. So um, we had, previous to this, we are in the Montello neighborhood meeting, the second one, we had, um, no, this is the first one, sorry. We had one steering committee in June. Um, then we had the citywide form-based code workshop, the June 13th. This was with the other areas where we want to apply the form-based code. Um, and then in August the 1st, we had a steering committee uh, meeting. Um, the next steps that I will come back to this in the, at the end of the presentation with a bit more detail. We will have uh, September 11th, another steering committee, and September 17th, we are going to present 
the form, the citywide, the form-based code that is going to be applied first in two areas, that is downtown and Campello, and later on will be applied to Montello and Lovettbrook. So, but September 17th, we will present, um, yeah, all the, the booklet with all the structure and all the things that are going to change, um, but that are not still applied for Montello. Um, and then after October, we will continue with this pro process um, for this uh, neighborhood uh, planning um, and vision. Okay. So before in June 13th, we have this citywide workshop. Um, this was first to explain what, what this form-based code is, uh, and we invited uh, the public to start building this type of blocks that you see here in the area so that they can tell us what uses they want to see in Montello, what are the types of buildings that they want, and how they wanted to place them in the area. So we got a lot of mixed-use buildings. Uh, we had a, um, a young lady that was um, that wanted to have like a hotel near the train station with a lot of uh, public amenities. So that was beautiful. Um, and then we got the steering committee in August 1st, so not a long time ago, and we had these concerns and suggestions. Um, so they talked about dangerous pedestrian corners, um, what if we could increase the height in these areas, uh, in the mixed-use districts areas, um, what could we have in the stop and shop uh, area, so they were thinking more of strip commercial, large mixed uses. Uh, could it, we have not only residential, but a bit of mixed use in Howard Street, um, mixed use too, or, so mixed use, we will explain a bit that, but mixed use in this area, um, better connections, pedestrian connections from one side of the tracks to the other side, so what could we do with this bridge? Uh, could it be better the, the, the pedestrian connection in the tunnel area? Um, what else? We talked a lot about the village area as well. So we also wanted to include it as the study area, um, mentioning mainly if we could have some kind of entrance open space in this corner um, and then some pedestrian connections from Bellevue Avenue and from this one, I remember the name, uh, towards the Spark Street, so there was a bit more connection. Um, so these were mainly the comments that came from that steering committee. So I've talked that the form-based code will be applied in some areas in, or in, the Brockton, in Brockton. And so we have downtown Tradbrook and Campello are going to be the two first, uh, where we will apply this form-based code. And later on, it will come to Montello and Lovettbrook. So I don't want to start talking about that form-based code we talked a little bit on the previous uh, meetings. I don't want to start talking about it. It's something that will come, and you will get that information. You can ask today if you want. Uh, we are here. We can answer that. Today, what I want to do with you is more of a vision, so we start from the beginning. And so we start thinking on um, how you see the area, what you want to see, what type of uses, what type of buildings, uh, a bit of heights if we can. Um, and so that's what I want to focus today. So I don't want to focus on the form-based code, but more on the vision. Um, so one thing that is important to understand, this is a part of the form-based code. Um, and I'm, what I'm showing here is building types, and I'm showing them because we are going to talk about today of the building types. And this is one thing that changes from the current zoning that you have where the standards apply by district. Uh, with the form-based code, all the standards, and that is setback, height, lot coverage, all these things, will apply by building type. And that's why it's so important um, that we are going to talk about building types. Um, that's why I have it in here. So I'm going to explain now the activities. Um, the first one is which building types 
you think that will belong in Montello. And so we have here some, uh, these are these two ones where you have different building types that I'm going to go through them very quickly. Um, and we have also the uses. And so what I would love to see is that you take these uses over here and you're going to start placing these stickers wherever you think those uses should appear. So what are these building types? Building types is a, a type of building that, that can uh, contain a certain use. So you will have build residential building types, commercial building types, industrial building types. And in these ones, uh, we will have a difference in depending on the density or the intensity of that use. So for example, we have here residential types and you have one dwelling unit, you have a duplex, you have a triplex, triple decker, or three dwelling unit. Doesn't matter how it's called, it's the same. Um, you have row houses, so it's one townhouse that doesn't have any setback, it's attached to the others. We have multiplex that goes from four to six, eight units. And then we have what we call historical conversion, where whatever you have historical mansion, historical very big uh, houses, that then later on are converted into four to six units. That's w what this type of building will be. Then we have um, the what we call mixed use. So what you will see here is the apartment, condo type, typology, and what I want you to see is also the difference in density, the difference in heights. So you have the like the four one or the six uh, story height. This gives a different character to the neighborhood, and so. Whenever you place and you think, oh, I, I like this mixed use or this apartment, uh, think a bit which one, um, which intensity you also would like to see. Uh, we have commercial buildings, so office building, and it can be the small intensity or higher intensity, so higher. Um, and then we have mixed buildings, which is retail on the ground floor, residential on the upper floors. Um, you have like until four. Uh, floors or higher than that. So these images, what it shows is same um, type, of, same building type, but just with a different on height. Uh, obviously, in the stickers, there are the num the names, so you will easily see uh, detach one unit, so you have it. Otherwise, we are here to help, and we can always answer. The same with this one. So we have lab building, so a building that has a laboratory inside, they can have some um, or for testing or for prototyping. We have smaller buildings and then bigger ones. So these will be more recommend, recommended for like an industrial area and this can be used in mixed use districts or commercial uh, districts. The same with fabrication buildings. You can have a small scale buildings where you have some light industrial, some workshops, some arts, um, some makers like furniture or jewelry or something like that, that can happen in smaller fabrication production buildings or you can really have a big manufacturer uh, building, so big scale. Um, and then with commercial buildings, you would have the big box, so um, all these groceries, uh, Walmart, Whole Foods kind of buildings, strip mall typologies, um, the pad commercial, and very high dense commercial buildings. Which do you think that fit in Montello? And then we go to the uses, so uh, what type of uses you would like to see? in this area, and it can be the arts and creative, uh, this is mainly the workshop um, makers kind of a space, uh, auto-oriented commercial food and beverage, light industrial manufacturing, lodging, office, and then residential with different intensities, retail, or any other that you would like to, 
uh, even if it's too specific, you can write it down and uh, stick it whatever you think it should be. So this is the first activity that we would like to, um, so that you will go, come stand up and start working in there. Um, and the second one that will be over here, you can do it whenever you want. You can start with this one, then go into that one. Doesn't matter. This one is we are looking into a type of incentive zoning, and that is developers could increase or owners could increase density. And this is something that we have to study where and how and and how are we going to do this, but. Apparent, with incentive zoning, what we want is you could have a higher building, for example, if you give back to community something. And so these are the amenities that we want to ask you, where do you think these amenities should be and where sh we should have them? Um, so whenever we do the incentive zoning, uh, it can be tailored to Montello area. And so these amenities could be the brick restoration, um, and that can happen in, in, in different ways. You can have more natural uh, brick uh, or a bit more urban with kind of a plaza um, or more like an active brick with some buildings next to it and some public uh, active uh, ground floor next to the brick. You can have them in different areas of the brook. So maybe this is more um, active, a bit more urban, and then the rest is more natural. Uh, that's okay. And then we have green, and it can be a small garden, pocket uh, park, or roof, uh, access to roof, um, active roof gardens. Uh, sitting areas, terraces over the brook, uh, sitting places and um, places where you could eat as well, uh, playgrounds, uh, water elements, green infrastructure. So these amenities, you will find them in these stickers and whatever you think that uh, there should be a, a big terrace in here, there should be um, a playground in this area because it's very dense and we don't have any. Um, just take the stickers and start playing around. That would be perfect. Um, and that's it. So this is for the, at the end of the session, I will continue with this. But please just stand up and come here. Um, and if you have any question, we are here also.